If the world hates you, remember that it hated me first. The world will love you as one of its own if you belong to it, but you are no longer part of the world. John 15, 18 through 19. Welcome to part two of the series, The Twelve. In the first episode, we covered the disciples Judas Iscariot and James, the brother of John, also known as James the Greater. In today's episode, we will discuss the disciples Philip and Bartholomew. According to the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 3 through 5, after his suffering, Jesus presented himself to the disciples and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father has promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. But what was the point of waiting for the Holy Spirit? And what happened to the disciples after that? Where did they go? Let's try and find out. Hello, I'm Mike Joberg, Marine Corps veteran and filmmaker, and we will try to answer these questions on today's episode of Forgotten History. Pentecost was the celebration of the beginning of the early weeks of the harvest. In Palestine, there were two harvests each year. The early harvest came during the months of May and June, and the final harvest came in the fall. Pentecost was the celebration of the beginning of the early wheat harvest, which meant that Pentecost fell sometime during the middle of the month of May or sometimes in early June. Christians observe Pentecost as a holiday, not to celebrate the wheat harvest, but to remember when the Holy Spirit came to the church body. According to Acts chapter 2, verses 1-4, through 4, When the day of Pentecost came, the disciples were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire, that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. The purpose of the Holy Spirit being sent to the disciples is said by Jesus and written in John chapter 14, verses 15 through 18. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. So what does the Bible say about our next disciple, Philip? John chapter 1 verses 43 through 46 reads, The next day Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, Follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael, also known as Bartholomew, and told him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? exclaimed Nathanael. Come and see, said Philip. Later in John, when Jesus feeds the 5,000, Jesus speaks to Philip. John chapter 6, verses 5 through 8 reads, When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming towards him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for all these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, It would take more than a half year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. There's another passage in John where Philip serves as a go-between for some Gentiles that wish to meet Jesus, and that is really all the Bible says about Philip. But wait, for those familiar with the book of Acts, what about Acts chapter 8, 
which talks about Philip, the great evangelist in Samaria, the man who turned the Samarians away from Simon the magician and towards the Gospels, the Philip who converted the Ethiopian eunuch by reading the book of Isaiah with him. Well, according to David Criswell, these were two different Philips, Philip the disciple and Philip the evangelist. The later accounts in Acts was done by Philip the evangelist, not Philip the disciple. Here's his proof. In Acts chapter 6, verses 1 through 5, reads, In those days, when the number of disciples was increasing, the Hellenistic Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, It would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the Word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers and sisters, choose seven men among you who are known to be full of the Spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and give you our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. This proposal pleased the whole group. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, also Philip and others. Then later in Acts chapter 21 verses 8 through 9, Paul, leaving the next day, reached Caesarea and stayed at the house of Philip the Evangelist, one of the seven. He had four unmarried daughters who prophesied. Why would one of the twelve be identified as one of the seven? Surely this must be a different Philip. The Syrian Acts of the Apostles tells the story of Philip the disciple traveling to Carthage and establishing a mission field in northern Africa. There he would get into a conflict with a Jewish Christian cult, the Ebionites. The Ebionites embraced an adoptionist Christology, thus understanding that Jesus of Nazareth is a mere man who by virtue of his righteousness and following the law of Moses was chosen by God to be the messianic prophet like Moses. They did not believe that Jesus was the Son of God and part of the Trinity of God. The heretic cult was also strictly legalistic and required Gentiles to first convert to Judaism and to be circumcised. They viewed the acceptance of Gentiles without circumcision as a renunciation of Moses. Philip would soon encounter the Ebionites and disputed with them over their false doctrine. He would be tied to a pillar and stoned to death in 54 AD. However, because so little was written on Philip, whose career was cut short only 20 years after Christ, Philip the Evangelist's stories would eventually become conflated with the disciple by later traditions and historians who assumed them to be one and the same. Our next disciple, Bartholomew, is Aramaic for son of Talmai, therefore not his given name. John calls him Nathaniel is another common name amongst the Jews, so it's natural that they might prefer to call him Bartholomew. As far as the Bible is concerned, very little is said about him, but what is said says much about his character. John chapter 1 verses 47 through 50 reads, When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said of him, Here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus said, You believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than that. He then added, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. But what happened to Bartholomew after the ascension? The rear wall of the Sistine Chapel in Rome is decorated by Michelangelo's Last Judgment. Within the fresco is a bald, muscular man holding a knife in one hand and his removed skin in the other. The disciple depicted here is Bartholomew, who is said to have been martyred by being flayed alive. Though apocryphal texts about Bartholomew locate his ministry in various places, the strongest line of tradition connects him to India. The Indian connection is supported by the testimony of second century Egyptian scholar, Pantenis, whose travels among Indian Christians revealed that Bartholomew had preached them and left them with the writing of Matthew, which they still had preserved at that time. However, the ancient Romans were vague in their description of Eastern geography. India, sometimes referred to the Parthian or Persian Empire, 
which included the modern-day regions of Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Iran. And these lands are not far from Armenia, where other legends would soon develop. The following account is taken from the book The Martyrdom of the Holy and Glorious Apostle Bartholomew, in which a very similar account of Bartholomew is written in the Acts of Abdias in the first century. It reads, Bartholomew, the Apostle of Christ, went and took up his quarters in the temple of Astaroth. In demonology, Astaroth is known to be the great duke of hell in the first hierarchy with Beelzebub and Lucifer. He is part of the evil trinity. The name Astaroth was ultimately derived from that of the second millennium BC Phoenician goddess Astarte, an equivalent of the Babylonian Ishtar. Bartholomew, having achieved notice of the king of the area, Polymius was called before him. Polymius had a daughter that was demon-possessed, and he heard that Bartholomew had healed a demoniac. He told Bartholomew, My daughter is grievously torn. I implore you, therefore, as you have delivered him who suffered for many years, so also my daughter is to be set free. The apostle rose and went with him. He saw the king's daughter bound with chains, for she used to tear into her flesh, and if anyone came near her, she would bite them. So no one dared to come near her. The servant said to him, And who is it that dares to touch her? The apostle answered, Let her loose. They said to Bartholomew, We can control her when she is bound, but we cannot when she is loose. And you wish us to loose her? Bartholomew said, Behold, I keep her enemy bound, and you are still afraid. Go and loose her. And when she has partaken in food, let her rest, and early tomorrow bring her to me. And they did as the apostle commanded, and thereafter the demon was not able to come near her. Polemius, although not converting to the faith himself, looked upon Bartholomew with favor after this, and allowed him to preach the gospel freely. Soon, however, this attracted the ear of a nearby king, Estiegis, who was unpleased with the number of converts. He ordered the apostle Bartholomew to be beaten with rods, flayed, and beheaded. Most traditions say his death occurred around 62 AD in Albanopolis, Armenia. Bartholomew's influence and reverence is highly regarded by Armenians today, where he is their patron saint. The St. Bartholomew Monastery was built in medieval times in the present-day Van province in Turkey. It was a prominent pilgrimage site prior to the Armenian genocide by the Ottoman Empire during World War I. However, today it is heavily ruined and the dome is entirely gone. This concludes part two of the series, The Twelve. The next episode, we will cover the disciples James Alpheus and Simon the Zealot. Thank you for watching Forgotten History. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you have any comments or show ideas, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks again.